Hey, my peeps, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of Vision Basic. Okay, it's been a long time since my last video, but I have been working on something important behind the scenes, which I'll explain shortly. I would like to focus on some topics for the time being that won't require lengthy videos so that I can put out content more frequently, but also so that I can work on important things pertaining to Vision Basic. I started out with one idea for this video and then switched topics and then switched again. So I've got plenty of ideas for videos, I just have to figure out what I want to talk about. Okay, this episode is going to focus on a specific aspect of Vision Basic, namely the creation of user-defined commands. I'm going to go over some basics involved in creating them, and then we're going to get into somewhat advanced stuff, stuff not mentioned in the manual. Before I continue further, I'd like to announce a couple things. First, I did a presentation for Commodore Users Europe just recently. I covered a lot of things you might have seen in my videos previously, but I also briefly demonstrated program evolution explaining how to increase program speed in stages. Due to the time constraints, I wasn't able to go into the details as much as I had hoped. I may have missed a couple of the presentations before joining the event, but I was pretty impressed with everything I saw, especially the Petsky Compositor tool by Jason Page. Anyhow, I'm all about making connections in this great community of ours, and I'd like to see groups like this thrive well into the future, so please check out the website. I'll provide links below in the description. And I also want to announce a cheaper package of Vision Basic I just recently added to the mix. I've added a paperback version of the manual to the lineup. I've listened to the feedback and this item has been on my to-do list for several months now. It took me about two weeks to reformat the manual and cram things into a smaller space. The print is smaller, so it's not for those of us with aging eyeballs. To help shrink the printing price further, I've removed the spreader portion from this particular variation of the manual. All right, so what are user-defined commands and why should we use them? Well, a user-defined command is simply a command, but it's one you create yourself. Now, I could keep adding commands to Vision Basic, and I'm sure that some people would greatly appreciate that, but there is a huge downside. Each command I add to Vision Basic becomes a part of the command support library that becomes a part of every Vision Basic program. So I'm very selective about any new commands that I might want to add to Vision Basic. In the vast majority of cases, a user-defined command could be created to fill that void. And when constructed properly, they can be easily shared with other programmers or saved separately to disk so that you can use them in future projects. So anyhow, that answers the question of why to use them. In essence, a user-defined command is really just a subroutine. You likely create these all the time in BASIC and in assembly language. So if a user-defined command is merely a subroutine, that might seem rather anticlimactic, right? Well, I hate to burst your bubble, but every single BASIC command in regular BASIC is really just a subroutine, etched into the ROM of every Commodore 64 computer. And this is the case for pretty much any programming language. I guess you could say that the exception would be machine language, but I'm sure that each machine language instruction has a kind of programming behind it. If you add two bytes in machine language, for example, the CPU has to add each bit together in sequence and handle multiple carries. So you have multiple things going on there. The problem with regular basic is that subroutines are generally called with the go sub command. And go sub is just kind of sort of a bland thing. We don't know what the routine on the other end is about to accomplish unless we follow the line number to the routine that starts there. Vision Basic, on the other hand, allows you to replace that boring go sub with something resembling a command, a word if you will. And you can add parameters if you wish. So the end result is something that looks and behaves like an actual Vision Basic command. All you need to do is create the subroutine for it. Most commands in Vision Basic have a certain amount of overhead, and user-defined commands are no different. 
To maintain some versatility, users are allowed to supply parameters that can be values, variables, arrays, and strings. This means that some interpreting has to occur even after a compile. So user-defined commands are not always the way to go in some circumstances. Each parameter you supply has to be passed to a variable on the other end, and that takes a number of cycles. There are times where user-defined commands are perfect for a task, and conversely, there are times where they might not execute fast enough when embedded in the middle of some game action. But even when programming in assembly language, you might have to rethink the idea of calling a subroutine because there are times when the 12 cycles eaten up by a JSR and an RTS are just taking up too much of the pie. Anyhow, let's jump into how to create a user-defined command from scratch. First, we should describe what the routine does. We're going to do that, or do this, with the disk, disk describe command. And there you go. Now we've described it. Let's move on. So my plan here is to draw a box of characters to the text screen. We'll have some coordinates for the upper left hand corner of the box and we'll supply a width and height and we'll even toss in a poke code and a color. Now when you create a routine like this in regular basic, you know it's going to run as slow as molasses. I don't even have to demonstrate that, so I'm not gonna. It's gonna look pathetic. Okay, so let's start typing our command. Local, we're gonna make it local. Box X Y W H C H and C. So here we are putting an end up front, right here, to prevent accidental execution in case the code before this routine flows into it. We have a local command so that we won't have variable conflicts with the rest of the program. We have an X and Y coordinate, a width and height, a character code, and a color. And we're calling this routine with the word box. Going further and creating this routine, so typically we might want to know where the lower right hand corner is. So we add this line. Oops, equals, explosive W. Nope, that's not a W. A two is not a W. Y two equals y plus nope nope <laughs> my goodness and we're going to create a couple of loops that are going to help us to draw this box of ours And now we need a screen position to track. So position. Oops, I'm not. This keyboard's confusing me. Okay, because this is on a PC keyboard. Y Y. Nope. Times forty. Plus X X plus one zero two four. C P equals P S plus five R two seven two. Now. I do want to point out, um, when you take this value and you add it to this value, you get the color RAM address. So, there you go. Easy explanation. Now, PS is the screen position, and, and I've already explained that, and CP is for the color RAM position. Next, we have to actually poke our character and color. So, line 1050, poke CP, C, poke PS CH and finally finish up our loops next next and exit and I've added a global command in case we put something after this routine now this is all very close to how you might create the same routine in regular basic but now we need to call our routine so we always 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 start with a clr just do it helps to clear those variables and all the funk i mean if you don't clear them it's like getting a bath in some dirty water or something i don't know 
you're going to have some crud in there. You don't want it there. Trust me. Well, especially if you got strings. I've added a decimal variable TI to test for speed, and we're clearing the screen. Clock zero to set the clock to zero. Line 30. We're going to draw our box. 1, 1, 38, 23, 160, and 1. And we're drawing this box to pretty much take up most of the screen. We want to test how fast this will run, so we want a pretty big box. But we also want to make sure the routine works properly, so we're not going to fill the entire screen. We want to see if things stop where they need to stop. And we need a few more lines. Key press. I like key press. I wish regular basic had it. But alas, Vision Basic does. And we're going to print the timer. And because our subroutine has the end here, we don't need to worry about anything else that's going to stop execution correctly. And I'm going to run it now. Okay, speed wise, not very impressive. I mean, click it. Took 155 jiffies. But I'm going to point out a mistake often, often, often made by people who are new to programming, especially basic programming. Notice line 1040 right here. This line is at the center of all the action, and we are performing a lot of math for each and every character we are plotting to the screen. I will probably repeat this across multiple videos, but you have to pay attention to what you are doing inside those innermost loops. Outer loops are typically less critical when it comes to this, but you don't want to do a ton of math inside that innermost loop, if you can avoid it. Otherwise, you're just wasting a ton of cycles. So let's see if we can speed this thing up. And we're going to start by going up to 10 10. Going to get rid of this little guy here. Boom. Now you'll see why we're, we're removing this in a minute. And we're going to move our calculations outside of the inner loop. May not seem like it at first. PS equals yy torms 40 plus x, not xx. CP equals PS, oh wait, I messed that up. AX plus, oops, plus, nope, plus, nope, plus. <laughs> 1024. Oh my, don't need this crashing on us while we're playing around with it. CP equals PS plus 54272. Okay, we're just making a small change. And we're going to move up our pokes. You know, instead of just typing it over <laughs> like I did earlier, we're just going to do that. And then, 1050. You know, I think originally I was just going to type all this down below, so I'm not sure why I decided I was going to type over the lines. Um, increase CP, increase PS, do 1040, W. Here we are using a do loop, and we're using fast math commands to acquire our next screen position, right here. Notice that we're not branching back up to line 1030, where the cycle stealing math gets performed, at least not while drawing horizontally. Now, I am a very OCD, so put that space in there. Well, I mean, you know, this guy, this guy here has got it. Going to have to put it there, too. Okay. Okay, so we get to eliminate one of our next statements. So, therefore, next. Got rid of one. And now let's see how fast things get. Crapola, what the heck did I do? Oh, you know, it's kind of funny. But I'm 
typing on a very tiny little oops, on a very tiny little screen here um, to try to capture it better because I need I need a better screen capture thing. Um, anyhow, let's see if it runs now. Boom. Okay, so that's a significant improvement. Let's see how long it took. 47 uh, jiffies. And that's a, that's at least three times faster. Okay. Since we're still using basic commands, we have some of that overhead thing going on. So there's only so fast we can get with basic. The two poke commands and the do loop have a certain amount of overhead that we really can't do much about. Now we could actually think outside the box a little. After all, who says that we need to use poke? Check this out. That's one. CP2 equals PS2 plus 54272. Fill, fill that puppy. CP, CP2. And see, and another fill. Yes, yes, two, and C -H, C H. Sorry. So what we're gonna do now is fill each line, and if it crashes for some weird reason, let me double check. I don't. <laughs> as funny as it is, sometimes crashes are not funny. Okay, I think I did it good. I'm typing these programs in just for the sake, you know, for the sake of those who like to follow along instead of just look at a bunch of code. So, here we go. Now, I have no idea why I listed that. We're supposed to run it. Dingle wet, dingleberry. Okay, dingle something. Boom. Wow, we're getting somewhere with this. And that only took eight jiffies. Okay, now we could probably speed this up further by performing the multiplication by 40 a single time and then just calculate everything else with fast math commands. If you would like an exercise to perform outside of class, students, see how fast you can make this routine by implementing the suggestions I've just made. You should be able to get the timer down to about three or four jiffies. For now though, let's skip that step and go on to something faster. Assembly language. Okay, so I'm just going to write new lines to replace some of the current ones here. We're going to make use of the width and height variables. So we don't need a variable, we don't need variables like x2 and y2. Let's create position variables the machine language way in the form of pointers. I don't think your typical assembler allows you to do this, so check this out. And here's the part right there. 88 equals PS. And 90 equals PS plus 54272. We're still using variable PS, but then we use it to create pointers in zero page locations 88 to 89 and 90 to 91. We're subtracting one from PS because we're going to use the width as an index and count downward. And when we decrease our index down to zero, we're not going to plot to the screen when the index is zero. We're essentially drawing from right to left instead of left to right. It's just easier this way when using machine language. You'll see in the next few lines here. In line 1020, we load the Y index with the width and we load the accumulator with the color. And in line 1030, we essentially poke a horizontal line of color to the color RAM, but doing so the machine language way. And 1040. Oh, 
Oops. Oops, oops. In line 1040, we again put the width in the Y index and we load the character Pocode into the accumulator. And we lay down a horizontal row of characters to the screen in line 1050. And now we need to add a value of 40 to each of the pointers so that we can focus on the next line we wish to draw. Now I know the uh, normal way to do this oops, would be to do LDA 89, ADC number zero, and STA 89. But I prefer the faster method because all that costs like several cycles here. So we can actually um, skip a decent amount of them for most of the time and just branch past here and only increase 89 if necessary. Saves time. I'm used to it. This is the way I always do it. But I suppose the proper way to do it would be the other way I showed you. But I am not proper. Let's see. Now there's a really good chance I don't even need that CLC but um well, actually, no, I do. <laughs> but actually, let me show you a little trick here. Now, this is kind of like um, super, um, heck, I don't even know what you want to call it. This is like uh, advanced. Watch that. Boom. Super advanced. <laughs> Basically, what we're doing here, um, because we are branching when the carry is cleared, we can not only skip this, but we can also skip this instruction too. Thank you very much for the tip, Mr. Osborne. Okay. You're welcome. You're welcome. ADC number 40 and STA 90. Now that might confuse some people when they look at the program. They're like, what the heck is going on? Oops. I like to push things here. Three, uh, number two, increase 91. Okay, so that little tip there saved two cycles. I'm just typing over the lines again to make sure that I did it right. And here we go. Finally, decrease H and branch not equal to zero to line 1020. And here, what we're doing is we're decreasing our height variable by one and branching back until it reaches zero and then we need to exit our routine there is no need to type rts we can just use return because it is exactly the same in basic so i like to spell it out it's more readable than uh, rts in my opinion and we'll add our little global now I just want to state that in all iterations of this routine, we don't have any safeguards in place. If you wish to share a routine like this with someone else, it might be a good idea to put some safeguards in place to prevent the pokes from wandering off screen, for example. This isn't hard to do, but I'm trying to keep this video short-ish and so far I'm feeling like it's going longer than intended, so let's move on and run it. Boom. Okay. That was practically instant. The power of machine language. See there, that only took two jiffies. Now, for something just a tiny bit faster, we could employ the concept of self-modifying code. I'm just going to copy and paste the code to the screen to save time. Because I gotta get to bed. Plus, I was going to do that anyways. So get ready for the nice, wonderful deluge. I think it's control insert. No, it is not. It is alt insert. There you go. Okay. This routine takes only about 87% as long to perform the same task. We accomplish this by using a somewhat faster variant of the STA instruction. This variant takes five cycles instead of six. 
Plus, we are laying down the color and character at the same time, which helps to save a little bit of time as well. It's all about the cycles when it comes to machine language. Lines 1001 to 1003 set up some tags that point to the addresses in lines 1040 and 1050, as well as the color, um, this one right here, in line 1030. Lines 1011 to 1015 plug the correct screen and color RAM addresses into lines 1040 and 1050, as well as the chosen color value into line 1030. And lines 1070 to 1100 directly add a value of 40 to the screen and color RAM addresses in lines 1040 and 1050. So in 1040 and 1050, these two addresses here are going to see a lot of action because they are not going to stay the same. They are going to be written to again and again. And that is as far as I'm going to explain this whole routine. So examine the code if you wish, but I say let's run it. Boom. Okay, pretty much just as instant, but running just a wee bit faster. Sometimes that tiny bit of time saved makes all the difference. So let's do something fun with this routine. I'm just gonna copy and paste some code into here, but let's exit out and oh, hey, one Jiffy. Anybody here feel like eating some Jiffy? Jiffy peanut butter or is it Jiff? I think it's Jiff, okay. Copy that text and there we go. And now, let's run it. Okay. And this is pretty much what you saw at the beginning of the video, except for that version, I first filled the screen with reversed space characters and then only plotted the color data to the screen thereafter. So the end results might run about twice as fast, but I haven't had I haven't done a comparison between the two. The difference is obvious though. Okay, so we're Okay, so next we're going to focus on something more practical. Sometimes you might wish to print values in hexadecimal or in binary form. Version 1 of Vision Basic does not have commands for, or functions to do either, but a future version might. You can use hexadecimal values in your programs though. They will be interpreted if used in place of regular values. Okay, let's stop this. I'm getting dizzy. Okay, to keep things quick here, I'm just going to load the user-defined commands that I created for this presentation instead of typing them in. In the user forums of my website, I did have a request for something of this nature, so that request was a kind of seed for this video that you are watching right now. Dun, 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 dun. Looks like modern art, by the way. I could be like selling these things. Each one would be a unique creation. Oh, let us replace. Wasn't expecting that. Wasn't in the notes. Okay. <laughs> the user-defined commands I've created here showcase a more advanced technique that you can use to help create your own user-defined commands with. You'll need to know some assembly language though. Also, I'm not going to explain everything here too deeply. I want to keep this quick and simple. You just have to follow the basic outline of what I'm presenting here to create such commands for your own programs, if you're going to use the more advanced technique. Now at the top of this listing, you will see the user-defined commands in use, both hex and bin, or bin, or whatever you want to call it. Each does not issue a carriage return on their own, so if you need a carriage return, just add one right after using either command. Here I'm simply supplying a print statement by itself. In line 10, we are going to print the hex equivalent for the value 65490. In line 20 and 30, we are going to print out the binary equivalent for the values 170 and 85. And both actually complement each other on a binary level. And in lines 40 and 50, I'm illustrating a more direct approach for calling the routines to help generate faster results. Granted, a lot of printing is going to happen here, so I'm not sure if there's a lot of speed to gain here by using this ladder technique, but I'm showcasing it here as an example of how to get a little more speed out of things.
In these latter cases, we're bypassing some overhead. And this is a technique I recommend using for main game loops so that you're not sacrificing precious cycles to any significant overhead if you are making a game where speed is rather crucial. The let command, right here and here, allows for a speedy transfer of contents from a parameter over to a receiving variable being used in your routines. Values can be returned back from the routine in this fashion as well. The transferring is done in pure machine language, so it's super fast. For this transfer method to work, you won't be able to use the local command in your command subroutine, so notice that I have rimmed it out in line 1000. Rimmed out. But let's say that you want faster user-defined commands and you'd like to retain the appearance of a command, as in the case in lines 10, 20, and 30 on screen. Well, again, there is a decent amount of overhead in transferring the parameters over to the variables waiting for them on the other side. And again, this is all related to versatility. You may have a parameter that is a decimal array, but the receiving variable in your routine might be an integer, for example. Vision Basic handles all the messy details behind the scenes as fast as it can. So if you want to cut out some over the overhead, you can pull the parameters directly with some assembly language. There are two routines built into Vision Basic that fetch parameter data. One is called FAB, and the other is called FENT3B. FAB means to fetch a byte, fetch a byte, and FENT3B means to fetch integer three bytes. Both of these routines can fetch data from both integer and decimal parameters. Let's scroll down a little. In line 1010, we define FENT3B, the address here works with Vision Basic 1.0, but is subject to change in the future. Lines 1030 and 1040 must be included. Line 1050 fetches three bytes from one parameter. The accumulator holds the low byte, the X index holds the high byte, and the Y index holds the extra high byte, which is only provided by decimal values. So in the case of integers, it's just going to be zero. We're going to ignore that extra high byte in this routine. Now you can you know, alter the routine to print out those extra two hex digits if you want, but I just typically, most people just want the four. Now, line 1060 is only necessary to pull extra parameters as a safeguard, otherwise a crash could result. If you only ever supply a single parameter, this line isn't necessary. But if you share your routines with someone else, they might accidentally add extra parameters, so a safeguard is recommended. Line 1070 is critical as well. So the format you see in lines 1030 to 1070 is the basic outline, and you should not deviate from it. You can fetch other parameters by inserting lines between lines 1050 and 1060. Just add another FENT3B or a FAB to the mix. Now you will probably want to define FAB somewhere up here before using it, trying to use it in a routine. The rest of the routine you see here prints out a four-digit hex value, and I'm not here to explain that part. Pretty much anyone familiar with assembly language should be able to figure out what's going on in the routine. Okay, and this routine here prints out a number in binary. Notice that we're defining fab in line 2000, which I mentioned earlier, which could be put up further up top if you want. Again, this is a Vision Basic 1.0 address and is subject to a change. And lines 2010 and 2020 are necessary. In line 2030, we are fetching a single byte. We're just going to output a single byte in binary, but this routine could be modified to output as many bits and bytes as you wish. You just have to modify the routine with whatever assembly language skills you possess. In line 2040, we have our safeguard call to fetch any other parameters that might have been accidentally tacked on. Again, line 2050 is a necessary line. Without it, you won't be able to return back from the subroutine and lines 2060 and onward simply output our binary value. Line 2060 outputs a percent sign ahead of the binary value, so you can delete the LDA and, see and chart out if you don't want the percent sign printed. So hopefully all of these examples in this video help to shed some light on how to create your own commands. Again, when speed is super critical, it's probably best just to do a quick value swap and just jump straight into your routine. 
But for program clarity, creating your own commands and placing them in the source code allows for better readability. And some tasks, like drawing a circle for example, take up so many cycles that the parameter overhead is practically negligible. Regardless, Vision Basic is versatile. You can do many different things, so many different ways. If you don't wish to type in the code for these two commands here, I'll try to provide a disk image file for the source code on the media page of my website beneath this video once I post it there. All right, let's run this puppy and see what it spits out. Awesome. Muy perfecto. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but it's all right. Look at our little critters there. We got a we got a hexadecimal value. We got a binary value. We got another binary value. Look, and look, they uh, complement each other there, like peas in a pod. Got another uh, hexadecimal value, and that's the one that uh, kind of bypassed, did a little quicker. And then finally, uh, another binary value. And uh, if you need a routine that does these kind of things for your Vision Basic program, here you go. I'd like to thank y'all for watching. And that wraps up this episode of Vision Basic. As usual, I thank y'all for watching my video. Please like, please share, and definitely subscribe. Do it now, come on, for more similar content. And make sure to visit visionbasic.net.